everybody. So today we're doing a something different. We're doing a story time. So I have the girls here with me now. All right, guys. So this is the first time we're doing our story time. So every day, every day, we read a story to you guys. Um, we're going to say today, Max the Bear family, family reading time. All right, Charlie. So what book you got? I got the book. Which I'm wearing my friend. What do you got? I got a book from a farming channel. Hi. Okay, Charlie doesn't feel too good today. So we made some tea and we're all snuggly and warm. Hi, Manny. Bye bye. Hi. 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 And so today we're going to read Little Readers. So since it's Black History Month, we saw Black Panther the other day, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome. super awesome. Yeah. I thought we would read you some stories for some awesome black leaders, female black leaders that have changed the world. So let's get started. Ready? Look at it. Yeah. already ready. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Today we're reading about Rebecca Lee Crumpler. She was a physician. Born in 1831, passed in 1895. If you guys know who she is, give us some facts about her in the comments down below. And give us a thumbs up. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so from the very beginning, caring for others was a part of Rebecca's life. She was raised in Pennsylvania by her aunt who provided health care services to the people in her neighborhood. This passion for helping her community became her life's mission. What do you think about that, Charlie? Good. Why is there two brains right there? Well, because she's a doctor. She attended private school in Massachusetts and went on to work as a nurse for eight years. That's a long time. It is a long time. In 1860, she applied to an all-white medical school, New England Female Medical College. A bold and risky move, but she was accepted. So that's cool. So she got in. Rebecca graduated in 1864, becoming the first African-American woman physician in the country. Out of more than 50,000 physicians in the United States, at the time, only about 300 were women, and Rebecca was the only black woman. So what do you think about this so far? It's, it's getting pretty good. I say it's a good thing about women. Do you think everybody should be able to go to the school they want? Yeah. Do you think it should matter if they're brown or white or Hispanic or Asian or anything? It doesn't matter if you're any yeah, definitely. Hi. What do you think, Chetty? Good. Good. Make sure to thumbs up. Yeah, say subscribe. Subscribe. Okay, so she began her practice in Boston, specializing in the care of women and children. But when the Civil War came to an end, she moved to Richmond, Virginia. The fallen Confederate South was extremely hostile to newly freed slaves, so Rebecca worked with the Bureau to provide health care to them. Rebecca had been born free in Delaware, with the state, the state with the highest number of freed blacks before the war. She was new to the diverse adversity and racism of the South, but she endured it for the sake of helping poor and the needy. Can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. Um, if, if it's not your birthday, do you still grow up? Yeah, you do. Unfortunately, time waits for no one. And, uh, yeah, you, you grow up. Every day you're growing. So throughout her career, Rebecca had a particular passion for helping women and children. In 1883, she published a two-part text titled A Book of Medical Discourses. 
The first part focuses on the care for infants, and the second part focuses on women's health. It is possibly the first medical article published by a black woman. So when she um, she worked with freed slaves, and that's a big deal because it was kind of hard for African American people to get health care back then, especially slaves, because they had no rights at all. So. That's a very sad one. Yeah, it is, and it's hard. But it kind of makes you appreciate today what we have. Are they all girls in the book? Yeah, they are. They're all women, yeah. All important women of color. It says all boys women. Yeah. What do you think about the story, Charlie? Yeah, how you feeling? So what do you guys think? Two girls. I like all girls. about the story that they're all girls and they appreciate girls. So. Like this girl, she helped um, slaves that were sick. Yeah, it's important. It's important for people to stay alive and have a second chance of life. Yeah. <sighs> so it looks like we're ready to peace out. Quinn had a spring scene, which is pretty cool. Me too, guys. Oh. Are you getting tired, Charlie? Okay, so what do we say, guys? Subscribe. Don't Subscribe. forget to hit the like button. Make sure to comment down below. And give us which, a thumbs up. Yep. Comment down below which which bald woman of black did you... Don't forget to hit the bell. Which bald, bald woman black of black... <laughs> Say bye, Rennie. Wait. Rennie, say bye. Say bye. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see some more bedtime stories, hit that like button, subscribe. And give us a bell and a thumbs up yeah, and subscribe. Yeah, dude. All right. From that bell, click that bell, and then you sign in and get a checklist and you like our video. Yeah, sounds good. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And happy bedtime, kids. Make sure you read your bedtime story before you go to bed. Or Mom just and listen to our bedtime story podcast right now. Yeah, well, and I think it would be cool uh, if you want to hear any stories. We can check them out from the library, and we'd be happy to read them to you guys. So have yeah, a good night. Have a good, good night. night. Make sure you get some, a lot of sleep. Because yeah. we have to go tomorrow. Yeah. Stay, stay smart. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.